All right, folks. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Art, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today we're going to be reviewing Guy Gavriel Kay's The Summer Tree, the first novel in his Fianovar Tapestry Trilogy. Now, I read these books, I mean, this came out in 1984. I think that's when I first read it as a kid. And the trilogy, follow, I mean, I, I read the whole trilogy back then once. I remembered I quite enjoyed it at the time. I just have not reread them since, and I don't know why. And it's weird because in the interim, between then, and these are the copies that I read back in the day, and I got the little paperbacks here, you know, the whole the little paperback series here. They're all here. Book one, two, and three in paperback. And then I've got trade paperbacks of book one, two, and three up here. And then I've got hardcovers also. So I've got three versions of all these books. Don't ask me why I collected them. I mean, I only read the series once when I was a kid, but every time a new little thing came out, I, I collected the... Uh, I collected the version. I have a lot of versions of a lot of different books. So anyway, let's talk about the Fianovar Tapestry, the Summer Tree Book One in the trilogy, okay? If you saw my uh, review of the Lions of al Rasan that I put up, oh man, you, you just saw me just gush on and on about how awesome, awesome, awesome that book was. And so I wanted to reread all of the Guy Gavriel K catalog. I've got all of his books upstairs in my library. Wanted to reread them all. So I thought I would start with the first trilogy that he, trilogy that he wrote, the Fianovar Tapestry, the Summer Tree. And, you know, I loved this as a kid. Didn't appreciate its brilliance as a kid. I appreciate its brilliance now. This Fianovar Tapestry I, I'm sorry if I keep mispronouncing it. Fionavar. Fionavar? Fionavar? I don't know. It is the most, this trilogy is the most Tolkien-esque fantasy trilogy out there. And what I mean by that is if you want to read something as similar to The Lord of the Rings with the same sort of story to it and the same sort of writing style as Tolkien, it's the Fianovar Tapestry. It just is the most Tolkien-esque series out there. And it only stands to reason because Guy Gavriel Kay helped Christopher Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien's son, put together the Silmarillion. So if you've ever read that, you'll know that uh, Guy Gavriel Kay was instrumental in putting together the Silmarillion. So it only it's only natural that when he started to write his first ever fantasy trilogy, it kind of, he mimics Tolkien a lot, but in all the good ways. And his books are a little lot more faster paced and a lot more palatable for modern readers than is Tolkien, although I think Tolkien's the master. Tolkien's the greatest. Let's, don't get me wrong. Tolkien's badass. Guy Gabriel K. The Fianavar Tapestry takes all the great things of Tolkien, kind of speeds it up, and wraps it in a little bit more of a modern flair. And his writing is just so amazing. Like I said, when I when I reviewed the Lions of Alrasan, I was just I was dumbfounded at how amazing this guy's writing was. I just couldn't believe that. Uh, Gosh, I, I wanted to burn all my own books just because this guy, guy Gabriel K, is so much better than me. And uh, is the Fianovar Tapestry as good as the Lions of Alrasan or a lot of his later works that were like standalone novels? No. I think of all of the stuff he's written, it's probably his, it's his beginner works and it kind of um, reflects a little bit of beginnerism, uh, kind of like that. By no means does that lessen the enjoyment you will have with this book, though. I mean, it's still written by a master. Guy Gabriel K's beginner writing is still better than all of our seasoned writing. All of us fantasy novelists combined, our seasoned writing still isn't as good 
is his beginning stuff. Let's get that clear first. What is the Fianovar Tapestry about? Well, it takes, let's pretend that there's the Lord of the Rings land, there's, you know, a fantasy land out there in the universe somewhere, and you're living here on Earth, in Canada, in wherever, and two people from that fantasy land come to visit you and say, we need your help to fix a few things that are going wrong in our kingdom. Here's a magic portal. We're going to whisk you off into our fantasy land kingdom. What would you do? How would you handle that? Well, that's the premise of this story. Matt Soren, a dwarf, and Lauren Silvercloak, sort of our Gandalf figure, they live dual lives in dual universes, one of which is Fianavar, one of which is Earth. They come from Fianavar. There's multi-universes in this. I mean, Guy Gabriel K did multi-universe, you know, back then uh, in the 80s before multi-universes were a big thing. Fianavar is part of the multi-universe. Uh, the Earth is too. These two people come to, I think it's Toronto, Canada, to a university to gather up five five people that are important for the to, for them to take back to their fantasy land to right a lot of the problems that are gone wrong in their fantasy land. And they're university students. The five people they pick are university students at the university. They uh, propose, for, you know, they get the five university students together and say, hey, this is what's going to go on. The university students are like, uh, some of them are like, okay. Some of them are like, yeah, that sounds kind of kooky. Some of them are outright like, man, I ain't doing this. I'm not doing this, you know. And But anyway, long story short, of course, they all five go through the magic portal into Fianavar, into the tapestry. And one of them gets lost along the way. Who are these five university students that go with Silver Cloak and Matt Soren. Well, Kimberly Ford, Kevin Lane, Jennifer Lowell, Dave martin and Paul Schaefer. Dave is the one that disappears. When they all five get into the portal, Dave vanishes. He doesn't make it to the fantasy land. They don't know where he is. But the other four, Paul, Jennifer, Kevin, and Kimberly, they land in the main castle of the main fantasy land, and that's when all Hell breaks loose because, you know, the castle is full of a lot of castle intrigue. There's a lot of magic talismans floating about. There's a lot of, you know, paganism and witchcraft and a lot of stuff sort of interwoven into this fantasy world that you are dropped into and you're plopped into. Now, if there's one criticism I have of this book, it's that our four characters that make it to the fantasy land, they seem kind of okay. I mean, they're just like... They're not like blown away with anything. They're just like, if I was to just be teleported to Middle Earth, I would just be like, whoa, whoa. Every, at every new site, I would be like, whoa, whoa. At every new danger, I'd be like, whoa, orcs. Oh, let's go to the mines of Moria. Oh, let's go visit Minas Tirith. Oh, let's, let's go to the volcano and throw stuff in it. I mean, that, but there's none of the, these guys. These four characters, my only criticism of this whole story is these four characters, they end up in the uh, fantasy land and they're like, it's just like walking into another room for them. It's like they went from the living room into the kitchen and then they're just fine with it. They're not a lot of questions and not a lot of, they're just everything that's told to them, all the political intrigue, they just kind of roll with it. They just kind of roll with it like, ah, eh, hey, you know, was, I, I expected just a little more like kind of pushback from them. Uh, a little more like inner thought like god man what's going on am I dreaming this or is this real or what's happening uh, because stuff gets dark stuff gets dark I mean these characters these four characters are put through hell you know not only because not only do we have Lauren Silvercloak the Gandalf like figure and Matt Soren the dwarf we've got I think it's Dermuid the prince, the dashing prince that charms the two girls. We got um, Gorlais, the chamberlain. He's no good. He's kind of our bad guy. We've got JL, the high priestess. Don't know about her yet. Is she good or bad? Yasane, the seer. Um, we've got Elael, the king. And, and then we've got the summer tree, which is... The summer tree is integral, kind of like in the... Elfstones of Shannara, how the Elk Cries was a 
magic talisman for the land of Shannara. The Summer Tree is sort of like a magic talisman for the land of Fianavar, and there's been no rain, so the place, it's a hot summer, and there's been no rain, and they need a sacrifice. The Summer Tree needs a sacrifice for to bring back, and I won't tell you which character they sacrifice, but I'm telling you, it gets gruesome it gets I'm, I'm like okay even as a kid i remember going oh my gosh you know this this is taking a turn for the sideways you know it's very pagan very witchcrafty very like bloody pagan sacrificial sort of with this summer tree and i yeah it's groovy dude it, it, people it's groovy it's awesome i mean it's awesome and that's all the that's all i'm gonna get into that but i mean this land is full of fianavar these people are brought from Toronto, plopped down into basically Middle Earth with the elves and the wolves and the horse clans and the Dark Lords. Yes, there's a Dark Lord here. And the, um, you know, all of the uh, creatures, the bad, ugly, orcish creatures. I mean, it's, they got it. It's, it's full of it. Like I said, this is the closest thing to Tolkien. This is like as if, this was, this is if, as if a bunch of uh, college students were plopped down into Middle Earth. I mean, that's what this is about. And, and they have to figure their way out. Uh, that's kind of what this is all about. It's a great book. You know, I talked about the four characters that made it through the portal. The fifth one got lost. Um, I guess another small criticism I, I would have of the book is we don't find out what happens to that fifth guy, Dave, until about two-thirds of the way through the book, maybe three-quarters of the way through the book, we find out that he has actually made it through the portal, but he was kind of dropped off by himself in, in a part of like like the other like let's say the other people were dropped off uh, uh, you know in in uh you know in Minas Tirith and then uh this guy was dropped off in Mirkwood by himself and he had to figure stuff out um but we don't find that out till about three quarters of the way through the book what happened to him that's another minor criticism I thought the uh the breaking it up that to that extent I wish I could have learned a little bit sooner what happened to him minor quibble minor quibble these are great books as good as lions of al rasan or tagana or a lot of the other standalone that guy gavril k did later in life no no but still still something you gotta read i mean this stuff is like jrr tolkien where the names the naming conventions of the characters and the land and the uh the lore of the and the history of this of this place that's like middle earth i mean it's just delicious to read it's just absolutely delicious to read so the summer tree i'm not gonna give it 10 out of 10 like i gave lions of well i just spoiled that review for you i'm gonna give this about an 8 out of 10 and i will get to i will read these other two sequels here soon and review them for you summer tree though 8 out of 10 well 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 worth your time